Operation Herrick is the codename under which all British operations in the war in Afghanistan have been conducted since 2002. It consists of the British contribution to the NATO-led International Security Assistance Force and support to the American-led Operation Enduring Freedom. Since 2003, Operation Aherrick has increased in size and breadth to match ISAF's growing geographical intervention in Afghanistan. Operation Aherrick superseded two previous efforts in Afghanistan. The first of these was Operation Veritas, which consisted of support to the war in Afghanistan in October 2001. The last major action of this was a sweep in East Afghanistan by 1,700 Royal Marines during Operation Jasna, which ended in mid-2002. The second was Operation Fingal, which involved leadership and a 2,000-strong contribution for a newly formed ISAF in Kabul after December 2001. Command was subsequently transferred to Turkey several months later and the British contingent was scaled back to 300. Since then, all operations in Afghanistan have been conducted under Operation Herrick. In December 2012, Prime Minister David Cameron announced that 3,800 troops, almost half of the force serving in Helmand province, would be withdrawn during 2013 with numbers to fall to approximately 5,200. Combat operations were projected to end sometime during 2014. Between 2001 and 24 July 2015 a total of 454 British military personnel have died on operations in Afghanistan. The UK ceased all combat operations in Afghanistan and withdrew the last of its combat troops on 27 October 2014. All training from 2015 is carried out under the operation name of Toral strategy. It was the UK government's position that the UK could not disengage from Afghanistan and so retained an active military presence until December 2014. Because of the continued terrorist threat facing Britain and the world, building a strong Afghan state is a long and difficult task. The Liberal Conservative Coalition government declared that Afghanistan was the UK's top foreign policy priority. Kabul and North Afghanistan. Between 2002 and 2003, the primary component of Herrick remained the 300 personnel providing security in Kabul and training to the new Afghan National Army. In mid-2003, the operation became battalion strength when a provincial reconstruction team was established in Mazarai Sharif and in Maimana. The UK also provided a rapid reaction force for the area. Overall command of the PRTs was transferred to ISAF in 2004. Sweden and Norway took over these PRTs in 2005 and 2006 respectively to allow the UK to focus on South Afghanistan. In early 2006, the NATO headquarters Allied Rapid Reaction Corps became the headquarters of ISAF for a year. The attached British infantry and signals personnel raised the number of troops based in Kabul to 1,300. Kandahar. In 2004, a detachment of six Royal Air Force fighters from Joint Force Harrier was based at Kandahar Airfield to support American OEF forces there. A planned withdrawal in mid-2006 was postponed to provide air support for the new ISAF expansion across the south. The force was later reinforced with more Harriers and an RAF regiment squadron. The Harriers were withdrawn in 2009 and replaced by a Panavia Tornado GR4 squadron on rotation. On 2 September 2006, a Hawker Siddeley Nimrod MR2 patrol aircraft, serial number XV-230 supporting Canadian forces in Operation Medusa crashed near Kandahar, killing all 14 service members aboard. It was an accident relating to fuel lines. Four more Harrier GR-9S were committed in May 2007 bringing them to a total of 11, along with an extra C-130 transport plane and four Westland Sea Kings from the fleet air arm. Harriers have been succeeded by tornadoes.
Merlin and Chinook helicopters are also based there. The majority of aircraft deployed for Herrick are based at Kandahar, Helmand, Mission in January 2006. Defence Secretary John Reid announced the UK would send a PRT with several thousand personnel to Helmand for at least three years. This had been planned as part of the gradual expansion of ISAF's area of responsibility from the Kabul region to the rest of Afghanistan. An initial strength of 5,700 personnel in Afghanistan was planned, which would stabilize to around 4,500 for the rest of the deployment. The move was to be a coordinated effort with other NATO countries to relieve the predominantly American OEF presence in the South. To this end, the Netherlands and Canada would lead similar deployments in Oruzgan and Kandahar respectively. Several other countries would support this move with troops. In the case of Helmand, Denmark sent 750 troops while Estonia would increase their Helmand force to 150 soldiers. Local Taliban figures voiced opposition to the incoming force and pledged to resist it. Activities before the main deployment, the Royal Engineers constructed a central fortification, Camp Bastion, to serve as a main base. A camp for an Afghan force was built nearby. On 1 May, the US OEF force was relieved in a ceremony. At the same time, the United States began a major offensive, Operation Mountain Thrust, against the insurgency in South Afghanistan. This brought ISAF forces into open conflict with the Taliban. British forces originally tried to provide security to reconstruction, but instead became engaged in combat. Platoon houses were soon established in northern settlements, due to pressure from the provincial governor for an aggressive stance. However, these quickly became a focus for heavy fighting. One of these was in Sangin, which was cut off and surrounded by the Taliban in early July. Eleven soldiers were killed in Sangin district over the subsequent period. On 16 July, with support from American and Canadian forces, 200 paratroopers were airlifted to take the town. In early August, 500 paratroopers and Afghan National Army soldiers were airlifted to Musa Kuala after violence flared around the platoon house. One British soldier was killed in the battle. On 25 August, several hundred soldiers were involved in a second operation to escort a group of Afghan policemen as a show of force. The Taliban made direct assaults on the British-held compounds, attacking with small arms fire, RPGs, and mortar rounds at short range. The British responded with airstrikes and artillery, often aimed right outside their compound walls, in what became a close-quarter battle. Casualties increased on both sides, with many more Taliban casualties as their assault had exposed them to the full scope of NATO's heavier firepower. Numbers of civilian casualties and damage to local infrastructure increased. The NATO forces grew increasingly concerned that they were alienating residents with heavy-handed tactics. In spite of their intention to win hearts and minds, it was also becoming clear that the British did not have the number of troops and helicopters to sustain the platoon house strategy indefinitely. Under the circumstances, Realizing that the situation could not carry on unchanged, British commanders approached local tribal leaders to organize a temporary ceasefire. Through pressure from the local tribal elders and the mounting casualties, the Taliban agreed to withdraw from the contested towns at the same time as the British, having been unable to realize their goal of forcibly expelling the foreign troops. NATO estimated Taliban losses over the summer period to be around 1,000 killed in Helmand alone. The British commander, Brigadier Ed Butler, later said the deal had come just 48 hours before Musa Kuala was planned to be abandoned because of the risk support helicopters were taking. As a result of the deal, British forces peacefully withdrew from the settlement in mid-October. The truce drew criticism from American commanders who believed it showed a sign of weakness on NATO's part. The deal would again be called into question when the Taliban retook the town of Musa Qala by surprise in February 2007. 
Following the killing of a leading commander in an American airstrike, the town was eventually retaken by British and Afghan forces. By late September, 31 British soldiers had died in Afghanistan over the year. 2. Corporal Brian Budd, awarded the Victoria Cross and Corporal Mark Wright, were posthumously awarded the British Armed Forces' highest awards for gallantry. Brigadier Butler declared the Taliban to have been tactically defeated for the time being. Response The stress of operations was admitted to be unexpected by the Ministry of Defense and there was increasing pressure to send more forces to Helmand. Lieutenant General David J. Richards said that this was the heaviest persistent combat the British armed forces had experienced since the Korean War or the Second World War. As a result, Operation Herrick was increased to 7,700 personnel, additional aircraft, artillery pieces and armored vehicles. An additional platoon of snipers were also sent. Operation Markaridad as of December 7, 2007, an alleged 2,000 Taliban rebels occupied Musa Qala. Coalition forces prepared for a siege of the town. Operation Markaridad was commanded by HQ Task Force Helmand, a bolstered HQ-52 Infantry Brigade, supported by 82nd Airborne Task Force Corsair. Afghan troops supported by British, Danish and US troops fought for control of the town, which was a major Taliban drug trafficking station and the Taliban's only occupied village in the strategically crucial Helmand province. It was considered to be of symbolic importance to both international forces and insurgents operating in the area. There has been some civilian evacuation, partly aided by the aerial dropping of leaflets warning of the impending battle. In preparation, it was believed that the village was heavily mined by Taliban fighters. Sergeant Lee Johnson of the 2nd BN the Yorkshire Regiment was killed shortly after 10 a.m. on 8 December 2007, whilst taking part in an operation to recapture the town when a landmine exploded. The Taliban insurgents withdrew from the area by midday on 10 December leaving the Afghan army and NATO forces in control of the town. This was the major operation of Operation Herrick 7 for Task Force Helmand. Operation Volcano in early February 2007, at the end of a six-week operation, the Royal Marines cleared 25 Taliban compounds in the proximity of the Karjaki hydroelectric dam in order to allow repair work to be conducted on the machinery. Operation Achilles In between early March to late May 2007, the British-led Operation Achilles, NATO's drive to push the Taliban out of Helmand. In early May 2007 Operation Silver, a sub-operation of Achilles, successfully expelled Taliban fighters from the town of Samgeen. It was followed in mid-May by Operation Silicon, where British-led forces removed the Taliban from Jeresh and much of the surrounding countryside. The Royal Engineers then set up three camps in the area for the Afghan National Army. The book The Junior Officers Reading Club documents Operation Silicon, Operation Last Day Cooling A follow-up to Achilles, Operation Last Day Cooling was launched on 30 May 2007 near the village of Karjaki Sofla, 10 kilometers to the southwest of Karjaki, to remove a Taliban force encamped there, a force of 1,000 British troops, another 1,000 ISAF soldiers and elements of the Afghan National Army moved into the area to confront the insurgents. On the night of 30 May the American 82nd Airborne Division conducted an air assault on enemy positions during which one of the Chinook helicopters crashed, apparently due to enemy fire, killing five Americans, a Briton and a Canadian. By 2 June, ISAF and Afghan forces had isolated several pockets of insurgent fighters in the north and south of the upper Sangin Valley. In an effort to win over local support, the Royal Engineers have started work on several reconstruction projects. 
such as digging irrigation ditches to help farmers in the area. Operation Last Day Cooling is described in the book, Attack State Red, about the Royal Anglian Battle Group in Helmand. Taliban Spring Offensive By late May 2007 the Taliban Spring Offensive promised for March 2007 had failed to materialize. This is put down in part to the massive casualties the Taliban took while trying to storm British strongholds across Helmand and by systematic attacks on their mid-level commanders during operations over the winter, which has hampered their ability to coordinate large troop movements. The Daily Telegraph reported that they wouldn't discount the Taliban as a spent force just yet, as an increase in enemy tempo was expected. As of October 2008 the number of clashes has risen from 5 a day to 15, lasting from 10 minutes to 11 hours. In a new development, it has been reported that the Taliban may be recruiting child soldiers from the tribal areas of neighboring Pakistan to fight coalition forces. Build up to summer offensive in February 2008 the Taliban prepared for the summer offensive with a number of attacks on JTAC Hill British Royal Family Involvement on 28 February an American website. The Drudge Report reported that Prince Harry, a member of the Household Cavalry, was operating as a forward air controller on JTAC Hill with a Gurkha unit. The MOD had made agreements with the British and a few other countries' media not to reveal that he was there until he came home or the news was otherwise released. An Australian weekly women's magazine New Idea initially broke the story in January, but it was not followed up at the time. New Idea editors claimed ignorance of any news blackout. Then a German newspaper, the Berliner Kurier, published his short piece on 28 February 2008, also before Drudge. Kajiki Dam Convoy in late August One of the largest operations by British and NATO forces in Helmand province took place, with the aim of bringing electricity to the region. A convoy of 100 vehicles took five days to move massive sections of an electric turbine for the Kajiki Dam, covering 180 kilometres. The operation involved 2,000 British troops, 1,000 other NATO troops from Australia, Canada, Denmark and the US, and 1,000 Afghan soldiers. The Canadians covered the first leg and the British took over at meeting point in the desert, using 50 BVS-10 Viking armoured vehicles to escort the convoy. Hundreds of special forces troops went in first, sweeping the area and although difficult to verify, British commanders estimated that more than 200 insurgents were killed, without any NATO casualties. British Harrier GR9 and WA-64 Apaches, Dutch, French and US aircraft, helicopters and unmanned drones provided aerial reconnaissance and fire support. Withdrawals from FOBs A number of forward operating bases have been closed as British deployments have been reduced in size. The last bases to be handed over to the Afghan armed forces expected to be Camp Bastion and three other unknown bases. British casualties As of 24 July 2015, British forces have suffered 454 fatalities. The vast majority of these fatalities have taken place since the redeployment of British forces to the Taliban stronghold of Helmand province. Only five men died between April 2002 and early March 2006. Full casualty records, including non-fatal cases, are currently available only for the period after 1 January 2006. Since that date 1,579 British personnel have been wounded, injured or fallen ill, 1186 of whom required aeromedical evacuation. Totals including the period 2003 to 2006 will be greater. Operation Panther's Claw, which began in July 2009, resulted in the highest number of losses in a month for British forces in Afghanistan. 404 fatalities are classed as KIA, and 49 are a result of illness, non-combat injuries or accidents or have not yet officially been assigned a cause of death pending the outcome of an investigation.